Hello and welcome to this wonderful course of computer network. Today we are going to discuss internet in more detail. Till now uh, we know about internet is it's it's a network of networks and it's an infrastructure which provides services to various applications. But uh, how this infrastructure is laid down, how all the um, internet service providers are connected, how one end system uh, transfers the data to the uh, other end system which is uh, residing at the other side of the globe. So how it is possible that is what we are going to see in today's lecture. So any end device if that particular device wants to get connected with the internet that device needs to get uh, connected with access internet service providers which is called access ISPs. So, uh, I hope uh, you, are, you are aware about access internet service providers in your area through which you uh, get the internet connection from. Um, examples are uh, BSNL office and uh, Airtel office which provides these uh, types of uh, services uh, in your area. And uh, if one end system uh, gets connected with access ISP then that particular system uh, is able to uh, like uh, use internet the, that particular system can uh, access all the uh, world wide web services through that internet connection but how that end system is going to get all the services of internet by just getting connected with the access internet service providers because all the access service providers uh, across the world because there must be millions of access service providers across the world they must be connected with each other to get you the service uh, like transferring uh, data from one point to the other or from one end to the other um, end system they need to get connected with each other but can you imagine how complex that uh, that, that, that particular scenario would be if millions of internet service providers are connected with each other with mass topology so this particular uh, slide says that end uh, systems connect to internet via access internet service providers we are clear with this and we have three types of uh, services residential access company access and university access i hope we are also clear with these uh, three things we have already discussed these residential access company access and university access in our last lectures so these are the access isps through which we get connected with the internet now the question is uh, are these uh, internet service access internet service providers are connected with each other access isps in turn must be connected uh, must be interconnected so that any two host can send packets to each other resulting network of networks is very very complex as i told you so this is the situation like we have got millions of internet access providers which you can see over here if they are going to connect it with each other like this so you can see the complexity level how complex this infrastructure would be so uh, to make this particular infrastructure less complex we introduced uh, three types of uh, internet service providers in this infrastructure so we have got first is access internet service providers second uh, are regional internet service providers and the third category is global internet service providers which um, cover international coverage so in this uh, ISP's hierarchy we have got tier 3, tier 2 and tier 1 internet service providers. Tier 3 internet service providers are called access internet service providers. Tier 2 internet service providers are uh, you can see these regional internet service providers and tier 1 internet service providers are uh, like uh, they are they are going to provide you the international coverage so uh, and tier one internet service providers are connected with each other uh, uh, 
with uh, mash topology they are connected with each other because they are few uh, in number and uh, access internet service providers are either connected with the regional uh, ISPs or directly with the uh, tier 1 internet service providers in uh, the infrastructure of tier 1 internet service providers are very costly and uh, if regional or access internet service providers are going to use uh, these uh, services of these two types of internet service providers so they have to pay uh, some amount of money to these uh, tier 1 or tier 2 internet service providers so uh, funda is very clear access isp has to pay to the regional isps and regional isps has to pay money uh, to tier 1 um, global uh, internet service providers which are going to provide you the international coverage and uh, let's take an example if, if one of the end system is connected with this access point or with this access isp and this x that particular system has to send some data to uh, a system which is connected with this access internet service providers so there must be a connection between these two end systems and uh, that that connection is uh, uh, provided um, by this infrastructure in which we have three uh, types of internet service providers tier 3 tier 2 tier 1 uh, uh, let me tell you one more thing about tier 1 uh, isps that the infrastructure of tier 1 uh, isps are very costly because uh, they are connected with very high bandwidth links uh, together because they uh, must have a very heavy traffic because they are the uh, ISPs which are going to provide the international coverage and uh, transfer your data from one end, uh, one end of the globe to the other end. So these ISPs, the services of these ISPs are very costly and some of the uh, example of tier 1 uh, commercial ISPs are you must have heard about these companies level 3, Sprint, AT&T, NTT these are the companies uh, which provide you the national or international coverage and access ISPs and regional ISPs has to pay uh, these uh, companies for using their infrastructure for transferring their data from one end to the other so you can see in this particular diagram very easily that uh, tier 3 internet service providers are access ISPs they are connected either by regional ISPs or directly connected with tier 1 internet service providers and uh, uh, regional ISPs are called tier 2 ISPs uh, which are connected with uh, tier 1 and uh, tier 3 internet service providers and uh, tier uh, 3 uh, sorry tier 1 ISPs are very few in number because um, uh, the infrastructure used for designing these internet service providers are very costly and uh, uh, they are going to provide you the international coverage and uh, these are very few in number and that's why they are connected with each other with mass topology and in between we have two more terms like uh, content providers content providers are nothing but uh, uh, the example of content providers are Google a private network that connects uh, it data centers to internet directly often uh, bypassing tier 1 regional ISPs so they don't have to pay much for providing these services and the second thing is IXP this stands for internet exchange point and these exchange points are used for transferring the data uh, locally in your uh, region without using the services of tier 1 internet service providers uh, for, for, for actually uh, transferring the data locally within your region within your country you have the Indian uh, IXP India uh, has a IXP with the name Nixi I hope uh, you must have heard about Nixi Nixi is nothing but it's a uh, national internet exchange of India it's a non-profit company incorporated under section 25 of India Company Act 1956 and uh, it, it's uh, it founded in uh, June 2003. Its location, these uh, locations of Nixie in India, uh, where these uh, where these uh, points 
are located are Mumbai, Noida, Chennai, Kolkata, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Ahmedabad, Guwahati. And it was registered on 19 June 2003. Its primary purpose is to facilitate exchange of domestic internet traffic between the peering ISP uh, content players and any other organizations with their own AS number. AS stands for Autonomous System. Uh, this enables more efficient use of international bandwidth, saving foreign exchange and also improves the quality of service for internet users by avoiding multiple international hopes and thus reducing latency. So I hope we are clear with internet exchange point uh, which are used for exchanging the information locally or within country without using the services of a tier 1 service providers and uh, uh, if you use them you are saving the bandwidth of the, um, those uh, tier 1 service providers and latency is also going to be improved because you are you don't have to cross those isps to transfer your data within your country you transfer your data uh, like if you're going through this path and if you are uh, coming through uh, this local isps uh, so you, your, your number of hopes are also going to be reduced and the end-to-end -end delay is going to be reduced as I told you um, one minute back. So that is how this um, IXP uh, in India, it is called Nixi, uh, is going to reduce the traffic at uh, tier 1 international ISPs, uh, internet service providers. So that is how this, this particular uh, internet infrastructure is laid down. And this complete infrastructure is uh, is a hierarchy of ISPs, tier 3, tier 2 and uh, tier 1. So uh, this is the infrastructure of uh, internet service providers and that is how internet is designed. So I hope um, uh, some of the point of internet is uh, clear. Uh, we will, uh, as we are going uh, to understand complete TCP IP protocol suit by the end of our next semester, so uh, we will have more uh, clarification of this particular topic. Uh, thank you very much. See you in the next lecture. If you have any, any issues, uh, we can discuss those issues in our uh, discussion class. Thank you very much.